Hello, YouTube. What's happening? No movie review this week, I'm afraid, because frankly, there just wasn't anything in theaters I wanted to waste my hard-earned money on. Instead, I'd like to talk about something else that's happened this week, uh, which happens to intersect with a number of interests of mine, and that is a controversy surrounding Star Trek Beyond, uh, which is the third of the J.J. Abrams reboot movies. Now, if you did watch my Doom review, you probably guessed I'm not a particularly big fan of the reboot. But as a lifelong Star Trek fan, I still try to keep up with what's going on uh, with all things Star Trek. And this week was interesting because they announced that Star Trek Beyond will reveal that Sulu is gay. In an homage to George Takei, who has played him in every other incarnation of Star Trek, and who is an out and proud homosexual. Now that in and of itself isn't particularly interesting because it's just following the trend of various industries trying to appease the insecurities of a bunch of loudmouth idiots on the internet who are so privileged that they perceive the most benign things as fundamental threats to their identity. Now the interesting thing is that the man they sought to honor didn't like it. Not only did he not like it, he openly spoke of his disappointment to the press. Instead of just towing the party line and saying everything was cool and that this is a great step forward for homosexuals, he explained that they pitched this to him and he repeatedly requested they not do it and that they should just create a new character if they wanted somebody to be gay instead of appropriating an existing character. He thought it was disrespectful to Roddenberry's vision to do this because, as far as anyone knew, Hikaru Sulu is 100% straight. Now, Sulu's sexuality hasn't been delved into very deeply on the show, but any time they did address it, it was indicated that he was a straight character. And Takei has confirmed that, as far as Roddenberry is concerned, Sulu was a straight character. It's funny because Takei's argument is the same argument Star Trek fans made in response to the news. And they were, of course, derided as homophobic for saying so. For many of us, the changes to the canon are bad enough when they're being done to water the property down to appeal to the 90210 crowd, but it's even worse when they do something like this, which is obvious and shameless political pandering. And these social justice warriors have the audacity to not only call you a homophobe if you're not on board with it, but also to go so far as to say you must not be a real Star Trek fan because you clearly don't get the message of Star Trek. Star Trek is all about inclusivity, so you should be proud they made Sulu gay. Actually, no, you fucking idiots. Star Trek is about meritocracy. The humanity in the Star Trek future is past all of this divisive bullshit. They're inclusive in as much as they don't exclude people based on some superficial nonsense like race, gender, or sexuality, whatever. They will no more care if the bridge is 100% staffed by white heterosexual males as they would if it had a plethora of races, genders, and sexualities as long as the people on it are good at their jobs. They're just not insecure about who they are, so they don't need to create these imaginary quotas to fill up so that they can feel good about themselves, so that they can feel represented. And making Sulu gay has nothing to do with inclusivity, and certainly not meritocracy. It's about victimocracy. It's about bending over backwards to the group that complains the loudest about being victims of some prejudice they perceive everyone else to have. And Star Trek fans are among the least prejudiced people on Earth because they're the ones who will accept something that looks like a pile of garbage and that's made of silicon as a sentient being with the same rights and privileges as every one of the rest of us have. And of course, Simon Pegg defends the decision to make Sulu gay here by bringing up the age-old myth that despite all of the progress Star Trek has shown on race and gender, it's never had an LGBT character. This is something that's been repeated a lot for quite a while now, and it's just not true. People say that Simon Pegg's an uber Star Trek nerd, but I guess he just forgot all about Jadzia Dax on Deep Space Nine. They had a whole episode devoted to the fact that she still had feelings for a member of the same sex, and if they chose to be together, they'd be breaking a massive taboo in their culture. They even had a full-on lesbian makeout scene in that episode that was incredibly controversial at the time. Hell, Dax is basically all of the LGBT alphabet rolled into one, because thanks to her symbiote, she effectively is a man in a woman's body, and has been vice versa. The Triller, an entire species of people who are as close to gender fluid as you could possibly imagine. And nobody's had a problem with Jedzia Dax, or Ezri Dax, for that matter, or any of the other Trill that have been depicted in, in, in Star Trek. The helmsman on the Enterprise E in Star Trek First Contact was originally written to be gay. It, the references to it didn't make it in the movie, but it was confirmed later in one of the books. And that wasn't a problem for Star Trek fans. Peter David's wildly popular Star Trek New Frontier novels have a character that's a hermaphrodite. And there's no outcry over that. The only time that Star Trek fans really got upset about Star Trek trying to portray gay people was in that really horrible 
Next Generation episode with the androgynous species or whatever, where one of them falls in love with Riker. And it's just because it's such a cringe-worthy episode that does a piss-poor job of dealing with the subject and just doesn't make any sense half the time. So clearly, the Star Trek fandom has no problem with this level of diversity. What they have a problem with is you changing the character. Not for story reasons, but because it fits a certain political agenda. And that is at best irritating, and at worst, straight up insulting. The supreme irony of all of this is that all these people pushing this politically correct pablum are the ones who will keep us from ever getting to the Star Trek future. All they do is create prejudices where none existed before by forcing themselves on people who had no opinion before. They're the ones who come in and try and steal and otherwise ruin things people love just because they don't have something of their own, which breeds the kind of resentment that turns people from ambivalent to opposed. Every interaction you have with a gay person is them breaking into an unrelated conversation to scream about how oppressed they are. It's not going to take long before you don't think very highly of gay people at all, and you're probably not going to want to have them around anymore. That's a pretty dangerous road to start down. So you social justice warriors out there may want to think twice about it. Star Trek has been a huge part of my life. It got me through some really tough times growing up, and it's been extremely disappointing to watch it driven into the ground over the past couple decades by people who either didn't know, or didn't care, or just forgot why it appealed to so many geeks like me. I hope one day I get to see it return to its former glory, where instead of spending their time on dumb political stunts to try and attract people who will never be satisfied, they get back to writing good stories. Because that was always what made Star Trek so awesome. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the whole tale of two gay Sulus. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to boldly go into other subjects in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel.